Hey guys, what I'm going to do today is we're going to talk about reloading a portable 223 or 556 on a Hornady lock and load AP press. What we're going to go over in this clip is a checklist of what you're going to need to reload this ammo, make it affordable, and also not break the bank. Now keep in mind, this process that I've adopted so that I have enough training ammo to shoot on the weekends, it is to make this ammo affordable and quickly. Um, one thing that you will notice is that I have skipped a few of the quality assurance procedures in reloading just so that I can pump out as much ammo as I, as I can. So the first thing I'm going to talk about as checklist is you need to go down to uh, Harbor Freight or Cragen um, or um, CVS Pharmacy, Walgreens and get yourself a couple boxes of nitrile gloves. Not only are the nitrile gloves pretty durable and sturdy, they're going to keep your oils on your fingers off your brass which will corrode over time. They're chemical resistant but they also give you the dexterity to pick up very small objects such as primers and uh, decapping pins. So what you're going to need to start out with is when you go to the range you're going to shoot, shoot a bunch of ammo and you're going to collect your brass. Not only are you going to collect your brass, you're going to collect other people's brass and you're going to ask your buddies to collect their brass and then have them take their brass and put them into your brass. That is probably the single most important way to make this reloading uh, affordable because I would say that uh, right now, 2014, first quarter, if you can find brass for 10 cents a round, that's probably a pretty, pretty good deal that you're getting. So one thing you might want to look at getting is some kind of mesh bag. Put this in your range bag. So here's my range bag. It's just a, um, I believe it's a Voodoo tactical range bag. You know, I put my ammo in here, put my gloves, put my... Um, my ear protection in here and then I also put this mesh bag. The reason why this mesh bag is nice is that as you're throwing your brass in uh, you're going to have a little bit of dirt from the range and then you can just shake this a little bit and you can see that some of the dirt is going to fall out of this bag and uh, that way it doesn't get your uh, your range bag, the bottom of your range bag isn't filled with dirt. So the other thing that you'll want to get at home is just grab a bucket, they're really inexpensive. You notice that this one right here says um, Dirty 223, and I have a bunch of brass in here. This is gonna be my dirty brass bucket. So I take whatever brass I have in here, and I'm just gonna dump it into the bucket. This is where I'm going to keep my brass and get it ready for processing. So when I'm processing um, my brass, you're gonna to wanna to get a tumbler. I use got brass in right now. I use the uh, Lyman uh, 2500 Pro Magnum Tumbler and I just use corn cob media. Corn cob is a little bit dustier than the walnut and some of the other um, brands but it's inexpensive and I usually tumble in my garage. So this brand right here is uh, Berries made in the USA six pounds of corn cob and I believe it was about 10 bucks. So you don't, one of my pet peeves with uh, companies and marketing today is that they market so well, they make you think that you need things that you don't really need. And sometimes it can make, you know, this reloading process um, so unaffordable that you get that paralysis by analysis and you just, you know, you never pull the trigger and you never do it because you're afraid it's going to be too expensive. You can do this uh, affordably. The other thing that you'll want to go down and get is go to your local mining store and there's two things in here that I was just getting. This is a classifying um, tray. It actually fits inside a, a uh, five gallon bucket right here. See that? So when you're done reloading you take your media and everything that's in your tumbler and you throw it on top of this and you let all your media fall down in the bottom of the bucket. You're going to be left with your brass and your brass is in here and you just kind of uh, filter it, shake it and you're going to get a lot of that media to fall out of your brass. Then I grab my brass, 
shake them out, get the media out, and everything falls in that five gallon bucket. When I'm done, I take the media in the five gallon bucket, put it back in the tumbler, and you're ready to go again. This right here will save you a ton of time, and I think it was 10 or $15 versus 60 for the big brass tumblers they sell at the stores. So that's handy. The other thing that I would recommend getting is some kind of brush. This is also um, can be found in a local mining supply, gold mining you know, uh, supply store. It's just a really good uh, brush. It's got real thick bristles. It'll be used for um, brushing powder and, and uh, things that are going to get in the way of your reloading process uh, and could jam things up. So we covered those. The other thing with, with tumbling. Tumbling can be anywhere from 6 hours to 24 hours. Usually what I do is I turn it on at night, and then when I get up in the morning, I turn it off, and I'll start processing, or maybe I'll even wait until the next day, and then I'll process, but I'll typically run them for about 12 hours. So you got your press. I would recommend that you mount your press on a, uh, a stable surface. This workbench is really great for me. Um, I would recommend putting some kind of support on the bottom like a, a steel plate. It'll help that when you're starting cranking out um, rounds that your press isn't going to wobble a lot and it's not going to break your bench. Um, if you had a, a metal bench, even better. So uh, you got your press, you're going to load that up. I'm not going to cover a lot of the minutia with the press and how to load it. Um, and, and this is just primarily a checklist, plus a lot of that stuff is in your uh, Hornady manual and DVD. I highly recommend reading the manual and the DVD. I'd say the second most important thing is get a reloading book. I don't care what book you get, but you need to get a book. So the book that I chose was the Hornady um, reloading manual. Um, there's a Lyman, there's, there's a Berries. There's all kinds of reloading manuals. Just get one and read the first couple chapters on reloading. The first couple chapters are going to teach you 90% of what you need to know to how to reload. So I also put bookmarks in here, and you see that one of my bookmarks is 556 NATO. And it goes over your uh, grains, how much powder, what type of powder, low range and uh, do not exceed range for powder and um, feet per second but really what they're talking about is um, pressure you know uh, chamber pressure so uh, the other thing i'll recommend is do not go straight to the highest um, pressure uh, the do not exceed pressure levels because it will start to ruin your brass and you do it once it'll blow out your primer pockets and uh, it make your brass um, uh, shorten the lifespan of your brass, you won't be able to use it because then you'll get primers that start to fall out. That's what I did, don't do that. <laughs> so I would start out at the low range and work up, or if you really want, start in the middle. Also, as you get closer to those higher end pressure scales on reloading, you start to wear out your barrel a lot faster. So, the other thing that you're gonna, you're gonna wanna start look at, <clears throat> look at getting, is your dies. These are RCBS dies. You'll see that, hopefully you can see this. You'll see that this is a 223 Remington or 556 by 45. SB stands for small base. What that means is that it's going to size the brass down as low as it can go to the base of the, of the uh, casing. What that's going to do is for an auto load or semi-auto rifle, it's going to make it more reliable. TC stands for taper crimp. Taper crimp is going to be for your cantilever bullets, which this is a cantilever bullet. I hope you can see it. And you see a little line down the middle. That is the cantilever, and the die will actually push the top of the case into that channel. The reason why that's important is that it doesn't normally happen, but it happens enough to where if you are shooting a semi-auto rifle without a cantilever, there's a chance that the bullet could walk its way out in the magazine or it could walk its way into the bullet which could create a catastrophic failure, a big pressure spike. So um, it only it's not the thousand times you get it right, it's the one time you get it wrong. That's why that is there, so it doesn't happen. So if you're shooting an autoloader, it is you know, a good um, idea to have a cantilever bullet and get a taper crimp die that will pinch the case into the bullet. 
Now if you're shooting a bolt action, then it's not necessarily as much of an issue because you don't have so much rocking and recoil in the, in the gun and the magazine. All right, so what do the dies look like? Just real quick, this is going to be your sizing die and decapping die. This is the die that resizes the, the brass back to its original size, and this is the decapping pin. This is going to push the primer out, the old spent primer, so that you can put a new primer in. One thing that I would highly recommend getting is replacement parts for your dies. This is a decapping rod. Sometimes it doesn't happen very often, but they can bend. The other part is these are decapping pins. These are very inexpensive pins, but they break. And when you're doing this on the weekend and all the stores are closed, you break one of these and you don't have a replacement, your whole process is shut down. The other thing that you'll want to get is, as you read in your, in your Hornady manual, is a shell plate. So this is an example of what it looks like. This is a number five. Each shell plate will correspond to a different caliber. The 556-223 shell plate is number 16. So I also write on my shell plates that they, uh, what they are, except for that one because it's new. So on my um, size 16 shell plate, I write 556-223 on it, just so that it's a quick reference. The other things you'll want to get is a um, funnel for putting powder back into your um, powder jug. An example of a powder jug is going to be this. Accurate 2230. This is an eight pounder powder jug. My advice is if you want to make this affordable, only buy powder in eight pound jugs. And it really doesn't matter what type of powder you buy, as long as it's um, you can find tables in your reloading manual for 556 or 223, because you're looking at making this uh, as affordable as possible and you wanted the rifle to go bang when you pull the trigger for training. So the powder can be a little expensive, but I promise you that if you make the investment on the powder in the eight pound jug and you start breaking down your cost per round, that is going to be the most affordable way to do this. And if you're doing this for training ammo and to reload bulk, if you can buy factory ammo at the store, then why reload? I mean, you should just buy factory ammo um, unless you enjoy reloading. There's parts of it I enjoy, there's parts of it I don't enjoy. But I really enjoy shooting and training, and this is a means to the end. So, or ends to, to means, I guess. Uh, stat, uh, this is a funnel. This is static resistant funnel. We talked about that. The other thing that you want to do with your dies, this is going to be your bullet seating die. This is what, in the last stage of your press, the bullet's going to come up, the shell's going to come up with the powder and the primer in there, and it's going to seat the bullet. One thing that you will want to get is you will want to get a can of um, gun cleaner and dry lube. I don't care what you get, but you need to get a can of this because this is what you're going to use to clean all of your um, press equipment and, and dyes. And if they're clean, powder's not going to stick to them, and that can be a problem if your powder's sticking to any um, factory lubrication that's on them. The other thing is, is when you watch the DVDs, and uh, I think this might even be in the manual for the, for the Hornady Lock and Load Press. You'll see that on some of these dies, they have little vent holes. They're very, very small in the die. And you need to clean those out. You need to clean them out and spray them clean. Um, sometimes the lube's in there so much that you want to get a staple from any kind of paper stapler. Fold it out until it's flat and use that to poke the hole. The reason is, is that hole is meant to relieve pressure and air or excess lubrication on your case. If you don't clean that, what it can do is sometimes it will dimple your brass. So I think you should see this. You can see this. This is an example. This is not a dimple from reloading. This is actually for uh, an ejection. Uh, but that's what I'm talking about, what it could look like. So next on the list is going to be case lube. I've gone through so many of these cans of case lube, and there's lots of different kinds of case lube. There's um, a drop, and there's a pad that you can roll them. I find that this 
on a paper towel and roll your brass out is the quickest way to lubricate your brass for resizing. I've used so much of this that I recently um, started buying this in the bottle and it's a much better deal. So you're gonna need that. The other thing I recommend getting is a case, um, a case gauge. So this case gauge is from Dillon. That's a 223556 case gauge. What you're gonna do is throw your brass in there and you wanna make sure it's not over the high mark and it's not below the low mark. This is supposed to um, be in the exact specifications of a 556 223 chamber. And uh, it says 223 does not say 556, so it could be just 223. Uh, main difference between 223 and 556 is primarily pressure. 556 is loaded to a much higher pressure, which is why you can shoot a 223 bullet in a uh, 223 or 223 round in a 556 chamber, but you can't shoot a 223. Um, round in a 556 five, chamber, uh, or uh, uh, other way around. You can't shoot a 556 five, round in a 223 chamber rifle. And the reason is, is that you the the rifle uh, chamber was not built to withstand the pressure of a 556 five, bullet. You will see the difference in your reloading manual, whichever you get, and you go straight to the pressures, and you can find out what I'm talking about. Um, the other part of the case gauge is I'll tell you when your neck is too long. You will have to resize uh, and trim your neck, and this is a good tool for seeing if your neck is too long or, or too short. RCPS bullet puller. These are really useful because you do make mistakes. This comes with a lot of different grommets, and you can take pull bullets out of just about anything. What you're going to do is you're going to throw your bullet in here, put this on like this, put this on, then you're going to throw your bullet in like this cinch it down and you're going to whack it on the ground a couple times and you see the bullet just falls out. So these are pretty expensive and they're real handy uh, versus compared to a, a manual bullet puller. So primer tray, real handy, uh, RCBS, there's a bunch of different varieties and brands but you will need this, it'll make your life a lot easier for feeding primers into your primer tubes which come with the press. So there's large and small primer tubes that come with the Hornady